Elizabeth Trova, and I teach English at Holyoke Community College. Hi, uh, my name is Ismet Oskilik, and I'm in the same department, English, and I teach English writing and literature. I think it's really important to convey to students the idea that you are confident and competent and you can guide them, that you have the experience to guide them and the expertise to guide them. I believe students like to feel that they are in good hands. Um, so it's important to be organized, organized that you have a plan for every class period. I think, it's, I think students um, are most comfortable when they know what that plan is. You give them an idea of the shape of the class, what's going to happen in the class period, what's going to happen in the course of the semester. And above all, you convey a, a confidence, that you are confident in yourself and in your ability to guide students towards success. Let them know that you're really happy to be there, that there's nothing you'd rather be doing. I think students really pick up on that and, um, and that you are there to help them be successful and that, that is your highest priority. Every class period, ideally, should involve producing something. Um, part of discussion, whether it precedes discussion or it follows discussion, should be some sort of writing activity, especially in an English class. You or some of us, I think, might be doing um, what is referred to as a free write, which is part of the low stakes writing, and it doesn't take uh, much time, just five minutes if that will, um, you know, ease them into the day's activities. Right, and it's a great yeah. warm-up. I, I think it is. Yeah. It is. And you know, no expectations, no evaluation, you know, right. no assessment. Although I do from. collect that kind of writing, you could. and and I actually use it as part of their attendance grade, mm. and um, and I don't evaluate it necessarily, but I read what they've written, um, and it. It's very useful to me. It gives me an idea of where they're at, so to speak, yeah. how yeah. much they're, you know. It's like a diagnostic tool, in a way. It really is. Yeah. It could be It could be evaluated, in a way, uh, as part of their consistent and active participation. Absolutely. Which you could give any, you know, any percentage that you deem fit. Low-risk writing can be a really great way for students to become more comfortable with expressing their ideas and also more comfortable with writing itself. I think that it, the classroom is a good opportunity to practice certain skills like integrating a quotation, integrating supporting evidence, practicing uh, signal phrases, parenthetical references, um, you know, perhaps looking at each other's work and recognizing uh, what's right and what's wrong. It, really, every class period should count. Writing is a challenge. Writing is even a challenge for experts. Uh, students in my class are doing a little bit of writing in every class period because you can't be sure that they're doing writing uh, any other time of the day yeah. or week. Um, getting students excited, especially on our campus, where there is so much stigma around you know, any English class. Writing or reading intensive doesn't seem to matter much. So many of them, I think, um, come with that stigma and are either really weary, if not scared, of what is in store for them. And we need to create a buy-in, which is not the easiest thing to do. Um, how do you make it fun for these students who don't want to even get involved? Mm. It starts with two things. One. I need to show my enthusiasm for the material. You know, even if it's something relatively dry, like MLA documentation format. Relatively dry. Relatively yeah. dry. <laughs> I will not call it boring, but relatively dry. I mean, you've got to show your own enthusiasm for every aspect, every skill that you're teaching. You pick out materials that, um, that are engaging. They might not realize how engaging they are at first, you know. They might not realize that they really, really will love this Emily Dickinson poem. <laughs> uh, but they end up loving it. Uh, so you pick out, I, I frequently pick out crowd pleasers. Perhaps the pure joy and sweetness of learning. I really, and I really try to um, cultivate that attitude and that and that feeling throughout the semester that there is there is something 
you know, not just valuable, but pleasant and joyful in what we're doing. And students already come with so many challenges in our, in our student population. Anything under the sun, we know that by now. So whatever we can do to give them a reason to come back to class would be very beneficial. Um, I think that the biggest challenge that we face as professors at, um, is the biggest challenge that our students face and that is perhaps what I would call uh, financial insecurity or financial pressures. I treat students in a very supportive way and I think I can get away with that because I'm a mom. Yeah. You know, and I can be nurturing and supportive. Um, I tell them I'm not, I'm really not in need to recruit any more children to my home <laughs> or to my life, so I preempt that on them. Uh, so we know where the boundaries and demarcations are. Uh, <laughs> that helps.